Hi, everyone. <clears throat> I'm Brian Distelberger, uh, Cornell class of 01. My go-to at College Town Bagels was the Eggs Melissa, and I'm the co-founder and president of Yext. So I saw the, the theme from the conference, From Nothing to Something, a few months ago, and I, I started thinking about it. I thought it was a great, a great topic, a great theme. And so, of course, the place to start is, whoops, what is nothing? Um, and so, you know, nothing, I think, for all of us is, is the beginning, that, that kind of starting point. And there is a starting point, of course, we all have in common here. The vast majority of the people in this room all, all went to Cornell. And so it's something we can, we can point to. And so for me, my nothing, to be even more specific, was probably more nothing than most of you guys. Um, <laughs> this is obviously my transcript. We redacted some of the information here, so I didn't. Thanks. I was happy I just graduated. Uh, we redacted some of the information so as not to embarrass any former professors that are here. Uh, Professor Streeter is here. I'm really sorry. I will absolutely do better next time. Um, but so, so that's my nothing. That's my starting point. And the next question, of course, is what is the something? And this is something I, I, I kind of, you know, I think we all have different somethings. The something is kind of that goal, what we're, what we're striving for, what we want to achieve. And it's, it's, it's different. So if some of us start companies or get involved in entrepreneurship because we just want to like, make something cool. We think, we think should exist in the world. Some of us are looking for, for recognition or fame. Some people just want to make a ton of money. There's all kinds of different reasons. But for me, my something was always, and I don't know why this is the case, but I just always wanted to build a giant company. And that was always something I found, I found interesting and, and thought about a lot. And so that's, that's kind of my something. So the question then becomes, if we kind of know what the nothing is, and then we know what the something is, what, what does that journey look like? What sits in the middle? And it's, it's actually a question I get asked a lot, and I think a lot of the people here, I'm sure all the speakers do, is, is kind of what their career path looked like, how they get to where they are. And when I get asked this, I never, I never know what to say. There's no easy answer. There's no, you know, there's no little straightforward little anecdote. Um, but some of the things, I, I certainly know what it's not. And the first thing it's not is it's not linear. It's not a straight line. So you don't start a company and you grow by like 5% every year for the next 50 years and then you're like GE or like Procter & Gamble or something. It just, it just doesn't happen. Another thing it's not, it's not exponential. So it'd be great if that happened all the time, but you don't start a company and then 18 months later it gets bought by Facebook for a billion dollars like Instagram, right? It happens occasionally, but it's basically a miracle when it does. And then the other thing it's not, but this is getting a little bit closer, is it's not really a zigzag, right? The zigzag, and this is how it's more commonly kind of thought, implies you're always headed up and to the right, you're always kind of headed in the right direction, and you're just course correcting along the way. But for me, that never kind of seemed right, because I've certainly done things where, after doing them, I ended up behind where I originally started. So the zigzag doesn't exactly work for me. So if it's not, if it's not a straight line, it's not linear, it's not exponential, it's not a zigzag, the question is, what, what is it really? And so for me, I get the starting at nothing, and that makes sense. But for me, I felt like I went from like nothing to nowhere, <laughs> to kind of nowhere, to somewhat anything, and then maybe you finally hit anything, you got something working, which is great, and then you're maybe at that almost something, and then maybe you get to the something. So it's this giant blob, this giant mess. Um, and so if it's not all those kind of things, you know, what is it? What's, what's kind of a good metaphor? And I was at, at our office at Yaxt um, a few weeks ago thinking about this. And for those of you that don't know Yaxt, uh, we're a B2B SaaS company. And we help brands, companies large and small, take all of their, their local content and information, store it in our cloud, and then sync it everywhere that consumer asserts, on their phones, tablets, computers, that kind of stuff. And as I was looking at all the businesses we were working with plotted on a map, it was actually a map of Manhattan, I was looking at it, and there was a thing that just, just kind of jumped out at me. The whole thing looked like a maze. And I thought a maze was really the perfect metaphor for going from nothing to something. So the first thing I did was, of course, go to the reliable place on the internet for authoritative information, Wikipedia. <laughs> and I looked up a definition of a maze. And a maze is a complex network of paths or passages 
Okay, that checks the box. I buy that. It's also a confusing mass of information, which totally sounded right. So I then started to think about what are the, what are the characteristics of a maze? Does the whole thing kind of fit together? And one of the first key characteristics is that, which, which fits with starting a business, is that you're going to make an indeterminate series of complicated decisions with imperfect information. Sounds totally scary, but is absolutely the way the world works. The next is you're going to hit dead ends and walls, right? You're going to start a business. You're going to, you're going to, things might be going well. You're going to lose key customers. You're going to have employees that quit. You're going to run around trying to raise money, and you're going to be told you're stupid by very, very smart people. It's terrible. <laughs> and then next, you really have no idea how long it'll take. So you might, you might think it's going to take two hours, two weeks. It could be two years. It could take two decades to build, a, to build a company. You really have no idea. So the maze seemed like the perfect metaphor for the journey from nothing to something. So, and that's, <clears throat> excuse me, what I'm going to talk about today are what I think of as the four key areas of maze them. You can see I barely graduated. I think maze them is a word. So, the first, entering a maze. This is really important, and there's two main things to keep in mind. So, the first is when entering a maze, you want to make sure that it's an area that you find interesting. And we heard this from a lot of the speakers earlier today. This is an area you're going to spend, again, an indeterminate amount of time, and you're going to need to become a domain expert, so you sure as hell better like it. And the next thing, is you want to make sure it's roughly the right size maze for you. And it's something that's hard to kind of understand and think about ahead of time. But uh, for example, if, you, if it's going to be important for you to build a business and get profitable quickly, you don't want to raise a ton of money and run around doing that. You probably don't want to do something like start an electric car company. Not a good idea. So those are the two key things <clears throat> excuse me, to keep in mind. The next thing that's really important, and this is the big one that really tips the odds in your favor, is who you run the maze with. This is absolutely key. And I'll give you an example. When we started, so most people actually don't know this, but Yuck started as a website called gymticket.com, and it was a lead gen site in the gym and health club industry. And I've, I'm lucky enough to have two amazing co-founders, Howard Lerman and Brent Matz, and for those of you that, that know, know us, have known us well, particularly, uh, particularly five, six years ago, would know we spent no time in the gym. We certainly had no domain expertise. <laughs> so we needed some help. And the first thing we did is we went out to find, uh, to find an advisor. And we were able to, uh, we were able to convince the, the guy who started the International Health and Racket Sport Club Association, URSA. To, to be on our board and help us understand the market. And he was absolutely invaluable. Um, and so as we started that business, the whole, thing, the whole thing worked and started to take off. And it was largely due to his helping us understand how, how, all, the businesses how all the businesses worked, how they were related, who all the key people were. For example, the first thing we learned, which we made this mistake at a trade show, is it's actually highly offensive to call gyms gyms. You're supposed to call them health clubs. They don't like to be thought of as gyms. Um, <clears throat> so as you're, as you're running that maze, as you're running that maze with the different people, you're going to be surrounded by, it's, there's going to be employees, there's going to be advisors, mentors. You have this, this whole giant support network. And it's going to be critical to you. And so making sure it's the right people that you're running that maze with is, is absolutely invaluable. And one of the key things to look for as you're, as you're looking for those right people is you want to make sure you have diversity of perspective. And I'll give you kind of the two extreme examples of, of perspective. So the first one is more of kind of the classic like VC investor, someone who hasn't really been an operator of the business. They provide you a really valuable perspective, but it's one perspective. And it's the perspective where you're kind of sitting on top of the maze and you're looking down. So they'll help you understand the market and trends and maybe some high-level metrics you should be striving for as a company, who potential competitors are, what they're doing, 
that kind of stuff, which is, which is absolutely invaluable, but it's one perspective. Another perspective, which is really important, is what I kind of think of as like the Google street level view, or Yahoo street level view, um, <laughs> where someone who's kind of in the maze with you, who's looking around, who's, who's run through one before, um, and can really help you, help you tactically with like the day-to-day -day decisions. And um, a good, uh, and, and, and kind of the good people for that are, are former entrepreneurs, are, are ex-executives in an industry, people that are, really have that domain expertise. So that's the second thing. Now the third thing, and this happens to everyone, you will hit dead ends. It will absolutely happen. There's nothing you can do about it. No matter how smart or experienced you are at running the maze, it's also going to be completely un unexpected. Um, so for us at Yaxt, we actually, uh, I'll give you an example of one of our more ridiculous, the more, one of the more ridiculous dead ends we hit, which was, was totally unanticipated. And what happened to us about, I think it was about five years ago, we had just raised a couple million dollars and we were really excited. We moved into this new office space and it was, it was built out, it was great, it was, it was 2,700 square feet, which at the time for us was a ton of space and all the employees, everyone was incredibly excited. So we get in the office and it's literally our first day and everyone's on the phones doing their thing, we're looking around and then all of a sudden we smell smoke. And sure enough, we look out our conference room window, and there were flames shooting up a chimney. Our entire office, the, the restaurant underneath, caught fire. This was on 60th and Broadway. This was literally our first day in our brand new office. <laughs> you can see the signs are still on the building that is for rent. We just moved in. This was day one. And so obviously, that is a wall we did not expect. <laughs> to, that was a dead end we didn't expect to hit. Luckily, it worked out, everything was fine. Everyone made it out okay, uh, and we were back up and running within a few days. So now, we've entered the maze. We've cho hopefully chosen the right maze for us. We're running it with the right people. We've run into a few walls, a few dead, e a few dead ends, but we've, we've made it through it, it was okay, and now, the next thing that happens is actually, is actually kind of magical, is actually really cool, is that you start to develop the ability to see around corners, just a little bit, which is great. And so for us at Yax, that happened about three years ago, where we had built um, Gym Ticket and that Leeds business had grown nicely, and we, we were on a path to be a $100 million business, which was, which was really exciting, which we, we were all thrilled about. But we started to see what we felt was this larger opportunity to create this local data cloud for businesses large and small. And it's something we felt was going to be a multi-billion dollar opportunity and it's something we wanted to go after. So we decided to package the, the Leeds business and everything into a subsidiary that we called Felix. And we sold that business to IAC and focused all of our energy on what would be our new maze, our current maze, uh, and what is now Yaxt. And we, were, we felt good about this, and we felt confident about it, even though it was a pretty big bet, because we had an amazing team assembled. We felt we, had, we really did have a good understanding of, of our maze, of our market. We had amazing employees, we had amazing advisors, uh, and amazing investors that were down for the whole thing, uh, and were cool about it, which is which was great. And so, for us, Yax Today now, we work with about 200,000 businesses, across the country. We work with dozens of Fortune 500 brands, and we're about, I think we're about 210 employees, 215 employees, and the business cannot be going better. Everything's rocking. Now, of course, we probably still will hit our, we'll hit different walls, we'll get lost a little bit in the maze, but we feel very confident about our ability to navigate out and continue growing and continue building a great business. So, to recap, how to navigate the maze, the four key areas of mazedom. So the first is make sure you pick the right maze for you. The second is making sure that you're choosing the right people to run the maze with. The third is you're gonna hit dead ends, you're gonna hit walls, it happens. You just gotta break through them, you've gotta find a new path. And then the fourth is developing the ability to of course see around corners. 
And when you can see around corners, you can start going really, really quickly. So those are the four keys. And I think there's only one word, when you, especially when you, when you put it all together, when you develop the ability to see around corners and, and move really quickly, there really is only one word that can do it justice. It's amazing. <laughs> But there is, there is one more thing, there is one more lesson that we learn from the maze. And that is, when we get through the maze, we get, to, we get to our treasure chest, we bend down, we open up the lid, and we look inside. And sure enough, what's inside? Another maze. <laughs> it's a maze of mazes. And that's the truth for all of us. And there's a really simple reason why. Every single in this person in this room has, has one thing in common. We're all junkies. We're all addicts. We're addicted to entrepreneurship. We're addicted to startups. And we just can't help ourselves. And so some of us enter the maze and are in the maze now as entrepreneurs, some as advisors, some are as investors, teachers, mentors. And some of the people that are probably here are our students starting to think about what is that first maze that they're going to enter? And that's what's coming up next. And so I think the, that the real, the real lesson and the real, the real kind of theme here, if I can just add to it a little bit, is not just, not just going from nothing to something, but we, in fact, go from nothing to something to something else. Thank you. Uh, Brian, thanks so much. Um, so, uh, so you talked about seeing around corners, and um, it's sort of this the sixth sense that that you described. Where do you think it comes from? Does it come from knowing your customers really well? Is it the team chemistry, culture? Is it time? Where does it come from? Yeah. So, um, so great question. Uh, I think the place it starts is actually making a ton of mistakes. Because mm -hmm. um, I think there, there's no other way to, to really develop that radar. And so the, the simple answer is it comes from all those places. Um, and that's why you need that, that diversity of perspective. But I think, there, I, I think it's almost impossible to develop the ability to kind of see around corners a little bit until you run into a bunch of dead ends. You mm -hmm. run into a bunch of walls. You do things wrong. That's the only way to really learn the right way to do things. So it's almost like a self-correcting mechanism. You bump into enough walls, you start to avoid them. Uh, with the sixth sense, if you will. Absolutely. Um, so here's another question from audience here is, uh, how do you know, so you talked about advisors. You talked about mm -hmm. advisors and the role that they play and, and an important role mm -hmm. over the course of your business. How do you know when to take it and when to ignore it? Yeah, really great question. So, so the place to start is whether it's an area that they really have expertise. Um, so a lot of people offer a lot of advice on a lot of things, which is great. <laughs> but um, try, try to focus on areas that they're, that they're, where they really have that domain expertise. Um, and then a lot of it is, is just going to be your gut and your intuition as you're, as you're deciding what to do. And sometimes something just won't sound right. Or sometimes you'll get, you'll get the same advice from everyone, but it might be wrong for you. And you might do something else. I think that, that is a great question. It's a really hard thing to figure out. But, but ultimately, you just have to trust your gut. Yeah. Um, Brian, thanks so much. Thanks again.